Thousands of Muslim worshippers have crossed West Bank checkpoints into Jerusalem to attend Friday Ramzan prayers in the old city's Al-Aqsa Mosque. Earlier today, Israel's military hit sites in Lebanon and Gaza in retaliation for rocket attacks it blamed on the Islamist group Hamas. The cross-border strikes came amid an escalating confrontation over Israeli police raids at the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound. According to Israeli authorities, two women were killed in a shooting attack on a car driving in the occupied West Bank today. One more woman was injured. The victims were reportedly found by Israeli emergency services. The Israeli military says its soldiers are searching the area where the attack took place. The World Health Organization celebrated its 75th anniversary. It marked the occasion by calling for a renewed drive for health equity in the face of unprecedented threats. 75 years ago, after years of war, the nations of the world agreed to set up an institution. The nations debated and agreed what this organization would be and do in, an, in a document called the Constitution of the World Health Organization. The WHO is expected to lift the emergency status of COVID-19 sometime this year. Speaking at a news conference in Geneva, WHO's chief said that all hy hypotheses on the origins of COVID-19 were still on the table. He reiterated his plea for China to share more information. The virus was first identified in the Chinese city of Wuhan in December 2019. European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen has said that Chinese President Xi Jinping has expressed willingness to speak to Ukraine's President Vladimir Zelensky. She added that stability in the Taiwan Strait is of paramount importance. Von der Leyen also mentioned that trade relationship between the EU and China is increasingly unbalanced. French President Emmanuel Macron has urged Xi Jinping to reason with Russia and to help bring an end to the war in Ukraine. Macron arrived in Beijing on Wednesday for a trilateral meeting with Xi and the EU's Ursula von der Leyen. Macron told reporters in China that Europe must resist reducing trade and diplomatic ties with Beijing. According to the International Monetary Fund, India and China are expected to account for half of the global growth in 2023. The IMF predicts the world economy is expected to grow at lower than 3% this year. It is also warned that the sharp slowdown in the world economy last year, triggered by COVID-19 and the Russia-Ukraine war, could linger on this year as well. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov is in Ankara to meet his Turkish counterpart. The ministers will exchange views on the current state of affairs in the Ukrainian crisis. They will also discuss the principles and ways of a peaceful settlement of the conflict. Senior US lawmaker Michael McCall has said he is doing everything possible to speed up the delivery of weapons to Taiwan. Taiwan, which China claims as its own territory, has been complaining about delayed U.S. weapons deliveries since last year. McCall's comment came, it comes, ahead, it comes amid heightened tensions with China. This is after Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen met with U.S. House Speaker Kevin McCarthy earlier this week. The White House has released a summary of after-action reports on America's chaotic withdrawal from Afghanistan. The report lays part of the blame on former U.S. President Donald Trump. It points to deliberate uh, degradation by the Trump administration. The Taliban overran Afghanistan in August 2021 after, the after U U.S. troops withdrew. Adult film star Stormy Daniels has said that she looks forward to testifying if she is called as a witness in the hush money scandal. Speaking on the Piers Morgan Uncensored show, Daniels said I have nothing to hide. I'm the only one that's been telling the truth. The next hearing in the matter has been scheduled for December 4th. Standing up to bullies and speaking truth to power. Fresh clashes erupted in Paris between police and protesters marching against pension reforms last evening. Police used riot shields and were seen dragging a protester on the ground. This was when fires burned around the French capital. Huge crowds have been protesting since January against the flagship reform of Macron's second term. The reform lifts the French retirement age by two years to 64. 
The South American nation of Chile has signed new laws and allocated $1.5 billion to fight crime. The decision comes amid skyrocketing perceptions of insecurity. It comes a day after the third police officer was killed on duty in less than a month. The new measures include criminalizing extortion and increased penalties for kidnapping and some cases of firearm possession. The head of Sudan's army has said he remains committed to a plan for a transition towards election. The plan provides for the formation of a civilian government. It is strongly supported by the international community. However, its signing was postponed for a second time as the army and the powerful paramilitary rapid support forces continued negotiations. A government agency in the UK continues to finance the high carbon aviation industry despite having agreed to stop. The agency, called the UK Export Finance, has backed several aviation companies with billions of pounds. It was supposed to have ended its support for fossil fuel projects two years ago. The UK EF is being criticised for financing industries responsible for carbon emissions. Scientists have warned that Europe could see a repeat of last year's droughts. The European Drought Observatory has reported a high risk of water shortages. Signs of drought have already been observed in parts of France, Spain and northern Italy. Scientists are worried that the drought is hitting harder and sooner than they had forecast. Water restrictions have been placed in Catalonia in Spain after reservoirs have dried up. Spain's northeastern region is facing its worst drought in decades. Catalonia has not received sustained rainfall in two and a half years. An 11th century church has emerged from beneath a dried up reservoir. Tunisia has implemented water rationing in the midst of its fourth year of drought. Water supplies are cut every night between 9 p.m. and 4 a.m. Tunisia's agriculture ministry has banned watering green spaces and washing cars. Reservoirs in the country are reportedly at about uh, are reportedly 30% short of capacity. A fierce ice storm has hit Canada's Quebec City. It has left millions without electricity and damaged trees and power lines. Montreal opened six emergency overnight shelters to accommodate people. Advisories have been issued to limit movement. An avalanche began on Mount Superior in the U.S. state of Utah. The avalanche gushed through the boundaries of a ski resort. Search and rescue teams have confirmed that nobody was hurt or killed. The resort has ordered guests to sh shelter in place. U.S. regulators are investigating the investment bank J.P. Morgan. The bank is being investigated for due diligence it conducted on past acquisitions. Regulators have scheduled an audit of the bank's deal-making in 2021 and 2022. The financial giant bought dozens of small companies during that period. US-based investment bank Morgan Stanley has said that it's looking forward to setting up a futures company in China. China's regulator has accepted the company's application for the same. If approved, it will make Morgan Stanley the second foreign bank to wholly own a futures business in China. JP Morgan was the first company to set up uh, such a futures uh, endeavor in China in 2020. The European Central Bank chief economist Philip Lane has said that the bank may need to raise interest rates again in May. Lane said that this, mi this might happen if inflation develops according to the bank's projection. Markets are predicting a 25 basis point rise in the bank's May meeting. Electric vehicle maker Tesla has cut the prices of its vehicles in the US again. This is Tesla's fifth price cut since January this year. It cut prices within the range of 2 to 6%. Tesla cut prices of both versions of its Model 3 sedan by $1,000. For its Model Y crossover, it cut prices by $2,000. For its more expensive Model S and X, prices were slashed by $5,000. Germany's antitrust regulator has opened doors to more measures to curb Apple's market dominance. The regulator has said that Apple's dominance makes it deserve the added scrutiny. The regulator can target practices that pose a threat to competition. Apple has said that it will appeal the decision. 
The UK antitrust regulator is looking into Amazon's anticipated takeover of vacuum maker iRobot. The e-commerce e giant has planned to acquire iRobot for $1.7 billion. Th this will expand Amazon's foothold in the smart home devices segment. The regulatory authority is probing whether this deal would reduce competition in the connected device market. India's central bank has halted plans for a project to develop a rival for UPI. UPI is, no, is the Unified Payments Interface. It's the nation's dominant digital payment system. The Reserve Bank of India had earlier planned to introduce new retail payment and settlement systems across the country. However, the project stands cancelled due to a lack of innovative and infrastructural solutions. Twitter will show at least 50% less ads to Twitter Blue subscribers. The company has taken the step to woo more users to subscribe to its paid plan. The microblogging platform has also said it will boost users' visibility on the platform. Twitter Blue is a paid monthly subscription plan that offers added features and options. The IMF warned that its outlook for global growth over the next five years is the weakest since 1990. The IMF has urged nations to avoid economic fragmentation caused by geopolitical tensions. It has also called on nations to bolster their productivity. IMF's managing director, Kristalina Georgieva, says the world economy expand, sees the world economy expanding by about 3% over the next five years. Smartphone maker Samsung Electronics has said that it will make a meaningful cut to its chip production. This comes after Samsung reported a worse-than-expected 96% plunge in its first quarter profits. The company has not disclosed the size of the planned production cut. The tech sector in general is struggling to keep up with a sharp downturn in semiconductor demand. Going to sports now, in football, the combined wealth of Lionel Messi and Cristiano Ronaldo is now less than double the joint total of Tiger Woods and LeBron James. All the four athletes are considered to be the best in their games. They're also among the most paid sportspersons in the world. Woods has amassed a whopping $1.1 billion throughout his career, while LeBron has a net worth of $1 billion. The England women's football team has traded their old white shorts with blue ones amid period concerns. England's Football Association has announced the new jersey change after many players voiced concerns about playing in white on their period. Forward, forward Beth Mead had said last year that the team had spoken to Nike about the potential change. The England women's football team has also won the inaugural final, final Asima Trophy, beating Brazil in a penalty shootout. The team, also known as the Lionesses, has an unbeaten streak of winning 30 games in a row now. The match was tied one all at full time and then the Lionesses won 4-2 on penalties. The match drew an audience of over 83,000 fans at the Wembley Stadium in London. The German women's football team is looking forward to their friendly duel with rivals Netherlands. The friendly match will be hosted in the Dutch town of Sittard. Germany will also be facing Brazil on the 11th of April in preparation for this year's FIFA Women's World Cup in Australia and New Zealand. In cricket, England's fast bowler Rhys Topley has been ruled out of the ongoing IPL after a shoulder injury. Royal Challengers Bangalore uh, had Topley on their team. He dislocated his sh shoulder while fielding against Mumbai Indians. Topley is the fourth RCB player to be ruled out because of injury this season. In chess, the world title match is underway in Kazakhstan's capital, Astana. The final is between Russia's Ian Nepomniachtchi and China's Ding Liren. The number one, world number one Magnus Carlsen was eliminated by American player Hikaru Nak uh, Nakamura earlier in the tournament. In tennis, world number six Andre Rublev has predicted that Rafael Nadal will again win the French Open in 2023. Nadal has won Grand Slam 22 times and been away from the tour since his second round loss at the Australian Open. Nadal was expected to feature in the Monte Carlo Masters tournament but withdrew from the event owing to a hip injury. In golf, 
Brooks Kuepa has joined John Rahm and Victor Hovland at the Augusta National. Kuepka was seen in full flight in the opening round and he had company too. He, he achieved his last two holes for a 7 under 65, giving him a share of the lead with John Rahm and Victor Hovland. In Formula 1, all teams have reached an agreement on changes to the sprint race weekend format for the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Formula 1 team bosses met on Sunday morning prior to the Australian Grand Prix to discuss potential schedule alterations and mutually agreed to it. Under the new proposal, Saturday morning's Free Practice 2 or FP2 session would be replaced by a new qualifying session for the sprint. Ferrari has requested Formula One's governing body to review a penalty. The penalty dropped Carlos Sainz's position from 4th to 12th in Sunday's Australian Grand Prix. The Spaniard was given a 5-second penalty for causing a collision with Fernando Alonso. Ferrari team principal Fred Vassar has said, has said the request for review was submitted to F1's governing body. Korean singer Suga has been named an ambassador for Basketball League NBA. Suga will participate in league initiatives and promotional activities. The partnership will also extend to Suga's other projects. In a video, the singer said that this is a great honor for him. Korean singer Lisa's song La Lisa has become the fastest music video to cross 600 million views on YouTube. The song was released on the 10th of September last year. Lisa has become the first female K-pop soloist to achieve this feat. The Daytime Emmy Awards have signed a two-year telecast deal with television network CBS. The announcement was made by the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences. The 50th edition of the Daytime Emmy Awards will be telecast on the 16th of June. The ceremony will take place in Los Angeles in the US. Rooftop Films has announced the recipients of the 2023 Filmmakers Fund grants. A total of 21 cash and service grants will be awarded to independent filmmakers. It's meant to support these filmmakers to produce their next film. The grant was established in 2000 and has since been awarded to and, and the grant has awarded more than 2 million dollars worth of grants. A brand new Superman animated series is in the making. Titled My Adventures with Superman, it shows a young Clark Kent. In the series, Superman will face off with an unknown enemy. Currently, two seasons have been planned. The series will release later this year. Actor Michelle Yeoh will receive an award at the Cannes Film Festival. It's called the Women in Motion Award. It launched in 2015. Since then, it has been given to actors like Jane Fonda and Viola Davis. Streaming giant Amazon Prime will premiere its first African film in Lagos. It's titled Gangs of Lagos. The film has been shot in Nigeria and is directed by Jade Oziberu. It will be released over 240 countries today. The conspiracy caper They Cloned Tyrone will open the American Black Film Festival. It stars actor Jamie Foxx. It will premiere on, the, on June 14th. It will release on Netflix on June 21st. Broadcaster David Attenborough's Wildlife series has been picked up by Amazon. It's titled Wild Isles and focuses on the British Isles. It launched in the UK earlier this year. It will now air in other countries as well. Guitarist Mick Mars has sued his band Motley Crue. Mars claimed that the band plans to kick him out of the group. He also alleges that they plan to remove him from, the, from ownership in the band's company. Mars took retirement from touring with the band last year. 71-year-old Mars co-founded the band in 1981.
US and Russia are dangerously close to an armed conflict. This year, 2023, New Delhi will be the capital of global diplomacy. For a country as diverse as ours, with 88% of the population illiterate, it was a very big deal to write a constitution, and that too, the world's largest. Meanwhile, if we may, here's a Republic Day gift from India for the BBC. A list of suggestions for the BBC for their upcoming documentaries. Number one. The Kohinoor and the Colonial Loot. Number two, an outdated monarchy and unhealthy obsession with the royals. Number three, racism in 2023. We're waiting.